Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with Lakeland Public Television, serving North Central Minnesota. Today we are chatting with Paul Welly, chairman of the George W. Nielsen Foundation. Paul has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Paul, for joining us today. Thank you. Good to be with you. So you are, uh, the foundation is a big philanthropic investor in the community. Talk about the scope of your investments as an introduction to the foundation, and, and then let's talk a little bit about the history of the foundation. But, but, but what do you invest in in this area? Yeah, we try to keep it basically as, as simple and as broad at the same time. So we try to reflect the community. Um, our uh, strategy is to keep our, our overhead as low as possible. Uh, we have a part-time executive director and then five um, trustees. And so we don't have, we're not an operating foundation, so to speak. We don't, we don't have staff that, that operate a, a particular program because we feel that Bemidji is, is very special and that there are so many people that are involved in, other, in nonprofits and doing things for the community. We want to support that. Um, Bemidji has also grown quite a bit over the years, and there's a number of nonprofit services that didn't exist when, when our foundation really got going. And so um, we've um, contributed to a number of facilities that have uh, you know, made a difference in our community. This being one of them, uh, building you know, for the public television. These studios, Lakeland right. Public Television, was, was one of your investments. Right. right. How do you make the decision to invest in a particular project like Lakeland Public Television? How do you ensure that your investment actually has the impact that you intend? Yeah, of course, uh, being local people, we're focused on Beltrami County and uh, just a little bit east of here in Cass Lake. And so we're, it's um, you know, a community that we're pretty familiar with and who the people are and who's um, you know, really invested in our community is in terms of um, you know, long-term goals and uh, um, knowledge about what the needs are in the community. So uh, it's been, um, we didn't need a, a staff person to kind of research who these people are. Typically we know who the, the board members are and who the staff of the different nonprofits. And so, uh, um, you know, basically reflects the needs of the community and we rely on them, so to speak, to come forward because we don't have a particular, I mean, right now, um, actually our, our two, two of our main strategies are economic development and um, um, chemical dependency and uh, jobs. We did a, we, we contracted with, um, the marketing and research department at Bemidji State University to interview 120 different businesses in our community. And what they found um, was that the number of businesses can't get people that have the skill set that, they were, that they're looking for. And so um, hopefully that information will help us to uh, try to work with local educational institutions. Uh, we, as a result of that, we funded a, uh, a new program at our high school called uh, the Career Academy. And so the high school now is going to kind of go back to what we used to call shop classes. And so they're more about the trades and, you know, uh, students that aren't necessarily interested in academia or going to a four-year college, um, you know, they have other interests. And so we want to try to emphasize that more. So that would be one example where we hired BSU to do some research for us to see what these businesses actually need. How do you ensure that your various initiatives are having the impact and the interconnected impact that you wish to have. Uh, do you, for example, build metrics into the investments that you make to ensure that the, uh, the community receives certain impacts or do you uh, make investments based on your own personal knowledge? Well, I guess some of both. We asked, um, you know, at the grant application form, we asked, you know, what their goals and uh, what the results are that they hope to achieve in our community. So I guess one example was we had, uh, again, related to this chemical dependency thing, um, we asked a couple of judges to come to our meeting, mm -hmm. and um, one of them ended up set, uh, setting up this DUI court. And so they try to channel people that have chemical dependency issues to uh, have some ongoing monitoring. So rather than go to prison or jail, whatever, even though they've had their third DUI, whatever, they're willing to go this other route. So. An alternative to incarceration, which is less expensive and, and perhaps more suited to addressing the actual underlying problem that is repeated. Right. Yeah. 
And so there we asked the input and um, well, we asked them, the, like the chief of police and um, county sheriff to, to give us some insight into their view of you know, how a chemical dependency in, in this case works with uh, crime. So that's really interesting. You have law enforcement, you have the judiciary uh, involved, you also have mental health professionals, uh, doctors all involved in, in coming together to address a, a particular problem. Right. That particular issue is really huge and uh, there's a lot of, you know, with the opioid crisis and uh, heroin and, and um, other things and, you know, it's, um, it's really a challenge. So um, we're trying to do, make a, somewhat of a difference, but it's, uh, it's got a ways to go. Can you talk about the origins of the Nielsen Foundation? How did, how did this, uh, this organization come about with its philosophy uh, that, that exists today? Well, um, George Nielsen was a engineer who owned, um, he came up here for work and then um, owned some different plots of land. And his daughter moved up here. Her name was Catherine Nielsen Cram. So she uh, uh, was really her interest in supporting Bemidji, looking around and seeing the need, you know, um, Bemidji's, uh, you know, 40, 50 years ago, uh, there was a lot, a lot of poverty. There still is some, but it's really grown as a community. And so was her willingness to focus the, he, this George Nielsen set up a trust for her to manage. And so uh, she lived a very frugal life uh, southwest of here and saved her money and concentrated on giving it away. So uh, she set up this advisory committee. So there were five of us in 1985 that advised her and a couple of other trustees about what we felt um, you know, Bemidji needed and kind of screened the applications. And then uh, she passed away in the year 2000. And, and um, because you know, we didn't have staff then and we um, kept the overhead low at the time when she was involved in it, we decided to continue with what basically the way that she operated, even though it had grown from um, about $2 million to now $33 million. So we still try to keep the same kind of philosophy and strategy that, that she had. And again, partly because the way Bemidji is that we feel there's uh, one of the things that really makes it special is the level of, of uh, commitment from so many people in our community. Do you ever find that the various needs that a uh, need is infinite? Um, that need is in competition with each other and that, and that really hard decisions, two very um, appropriate applications are coming in, but you can't do both? Because we have so many nonprofit organizations, we don't do what, what they call operating expenses. Right. So they have to become viable uh, local support or other you know, grants from other foundations or state and federal funding. So you do uh, pump priming. To, get, to help people get a start. You do capacity building. People who have a start might need to, to grow and might need some temporary help as they're, as they're growing. Um, we've talked about capital projects, um, such as Lakeland Public uh, Television. Are there any other um, kind of uh, grants that you do? For example, when an organization might be in crisis that you view as temporary, would you make a grant under those kinds of circumstances or is that also like operating outside of the purview of your grants? The only thing that kind of comes to mind is um, we've helped, for instance, um, build American Indian Resource Center while well, they had funding from the state of Minnesota and their, um, their bids when they went to bidding the project actually came higher than what, what the architect had estimated. Mm -hmm. And so the, the state of Minnesota, they go through a big uh, bonding issue and of course, you know, the timing of it, they weren't going to be able to go back to the state of Minnesota for a bonding issue because they do it every two years. And so they had to come back to our foundation and say, we either get the rest of this money to, to uh, complete the project, otherwise it's probably not going to get done. So I guess that kind of, that kind of crisis, um, I guess not, other ones don't really come to mind other than um, the usual, you know, needs to get, get things done. They have have a need to accomplish something that's either going to change the scope of an organization or change a focus or add a, add a service, you know. So the Boys and Girls Club that started a number of years ago, they've had different programs. And so um, we've helped fund those new programs. What kind of uh, projects do you have planned for the future? Can you give us any insight into those? Well, uh, let's see. 
right now uh, we have a commitment to uh, Bemidji Area Tennis Association. So they just started trying to raise money for a new facility. Um, so we made a pledge to them that we would fund uh, X amount of dollars based on the fact that they have to raise, raise some money. Um, we're part of this shooting sports association that's being, its uh, facility is being built north of town. A number of different um, nonprofit clubs and groups, um, 4-H and uh, trap shooting and a number of different groups are part of that project. We're working with uh, Bemidji State University with some interns. We started a new intern program so uh, people that are taking, you know, have their majors, they get a chance to work with a local business uh, so they get hands-on experience. Uh, so we, we have that program going. Well, Paul Welly, thank you so much for sharing the work of the George W. Nielsen Foundation, and thank you so much for your insights.